folks, this is Carlos with Carlos Reliable Motors. Right now we're in some tough times and we got something special for you. Yep, we got it. You need it to social distance, we got it. We got all kinds of special stuff in right now. Help you keep people away from you. That's right, we got this this thing right here. This is a PGT 95 AA. That's an AA flight cannon right there. Your neighbor's flying drones over your house? Drop it. There you go. We got these UAZ camouflage thingies. These things are nice right here. I mean, you can load up the whole family. Just drop them in there. You can go to the store. You can do whatever you want. You know, you can look like a like a terrorist from Back to the Future in this thing. Oh yeah, they got the UAZ. Look at this thing. I got an armored troop carrier with a 30, 30 millimeter auto cannon. I mean, look at that. Look at. I mean, it's even got rockets with it. Tommy, did you put rockets on there? Okay, we got rockets. I mean, look at this thing. Look at the cargo space in this thing. You can load up the whole family. You can, do, I mean, you can go to the store. You can go to the hardware store. You name it. People see this running, they're not gonna, they're not gonna talk to you. They'll stay six feet away. I promise. We got this bad boy. This is a BTR 90. I mean, this is look at that. Look at that thing. Look at that cannon. I mean, and these things work, folks. These things really work. I even got ammo for you. I can't guarantee it'll fire, but I got it. I mean, look at you got jerry cans. I mean, this is a survivalist dream right here. Look at this thing. I mean, I even got these old blurry tanks. Look at this thing. I don't even know what year that's from, but that's old. I mean, you got this this guy right here. Look at this thing. I mean, we got it. We got it down here at Carlos Reliable Motors. So if you need to social distance, we got what you need. So you come on down and see Carlos, and I'll get you taken care of. Tommy, put specials on these things. That, folks, that right there is a whole lot of seed. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the show. It is your host, Raznak, and welcome to American Farmer. Today, we're going to be talking about planting some crops. We're going to be looking at planting canola as a variety of crops this year. Due to really, really low prices in soybeans, we have a lot of soybeans still on hand. So talking with, uh, with my family, we have decided to uh, plant what, us what usually is our soybean fields. We're going to be planting those with canola. Uh, the nice thing about that is we actually can get that in the ground a little earlier than soybeans. So we'd be planting canola first and then following up with corn later on in the spring. Just leaving the Pioneer Seed, seed Dealer. And we've got about 1,300 bushels of seed here in the seed tender. And with that, hopefully we'll be able to get the canola seeded in. And I will talk to you guys get back to the farm, be looking at some equipment, talk more about what we'll be doing today. Today we're going to be planting canola, or otherwise known as rapeseed. Just uh, a couple different names for it all over the world. This is a very, very old crop. In fact, um, it's been documented that, that canola was grown 4,000 years ago and in India and over 2,000 years ago in China and Japan and primarily was an Asian crop up until the mid-1950s when it was really really hard for European and North American markets to get access to Asian uh, canola. So ca uh, farmers in Canada developed their own form of North American canola and that's what you'll be seeing us plant. We'll be planting a variety of that crop um, and mainly here in North America, United States and Canada, is this this crop that was developed back in the 50s and six or 19, late 1950s by Canadian scientists. Um, today we're going to be using the John Deere 8970. We're also going to be using our Great Plains Cedar, and I have it set up. Um, I went ahead and been working on it pretty much last day and getting the seed heads spaced out. Very well. Um, I've kind of converted this over from row crop to more of a uh, broadcast or drill style because the amount of canola you put in the ground is is a little more intense than our normal row crop planting of corn 
and soybeans. But that's why we went with this Great Plains Cedar because it gives us a lot of options. And uh, yeah, that's what we'll be using today. We'll also be using our seed tender. Oh, I left the blinker on. We'll be using our seed tender. Uh, this is our trusty handy seed tender. We've used this for many years. It'll hold around 1,300 bushels of seed that we pick up in bulk from the Pioneer plant. This is our seed for canola. So we'll be using, uh, and then we'll actually have to make other runs when we start planting corn later on in the spring. I think that's enough talk for the day. I think it's time to get in the tractor and get to work so we can get this seed in the ground. See you out in the field. to jump out real quick and take a look and see how uh, this planter is doing. Everything looks pretty good. Thing looks, I mean, it looks nice. I'm happy with it. As long as the birds don't eat all the seed. <laughs> now everything looks good. Looks good. So with the Great Plains, we have this trailed uh, fertilizer seed starter liquid tank. And in here we have um, just a mix of nutrients. It's especially designed for the canola. It's um, some phosphorus, potassium, a little bit of nitrogen. Not a whole lot of nitrogen because we, we pre-fertilize uh, the fields for nitrogen. And some other micronutrients and things of that nature. It's a, it's a seed starter that's used, uh, made by Pioneer to be used with the, the seed that we purchased. And it's supposed to help ensure uh, better yield and even breakthrough, uh, you know, even emergence and all that, all that good stuff that we worry about as farmers. Right, let's jump back in here and get to work. sure some of you asking yourself, why canola, Raz? Why are you changing up your your plans for the year? Well, like I said earlier in the episode, soybean prices are not very good right now. And we, we have a lot of soybeans still on hand that we need to market. We just haven't been able to do that at a price we want to. So instead of filling up our silos with more and more soybeans, we have the equipment and the means to do canola. We've actually done this in the past, so we decided that it probably would be beneficial to add some variety to our farm and then throw in throw in a little canola. Um, there's different ways of harvesting canola, which we'll definitely talk about later on in the year. A lot of folks in the northern Midwest and up in Canada, they cut the canola, swath it, and then use uh, pickup harvesters. We'll be harvesting it in the traditional way, 
with a grain header uh, similar to how we do soybeans. A little bit about canola. Uh, it's used in food production and oil. Everybody's heard of vegetable oil, canola oil, things of that nature. It's also used uh, uh, primarily what we'll be selling it off for is a component in biodiesel. That's what we'll be using it. It's a, it, it, hopefully it'll be a good crop, crop for us. Um, the cost of seed, fertilizer, labor, we put all the numbers together and it looked like we would we would do okay. Uh, we're not going to break the bank with our canola crop this year, but as long as the prices stay stable, we should be doing okay when we sell this off. Let's get back to work. Hope you're enjoying the footage. And I'll keep uh, shooting clips so that I can uh, put those in. Dad's there in the 8970. He went ahead and switched out. I grabbed a bite to eat. And on my way back, I grabbed another tank of uh, the fertilizer seed starter. I'll fill up that liquid tank when he gets down here. Like I was saying earlier, we have all the equipment we need for canola. We have our planter. And then for weed management, um, since about the 1990s, uh, we have had a genetically modified canola that is Roundup resistant or herbicide resistant. So that is very nice for weed management and the fact that we don't kill the crop <laughs> by spraying weeds. And in fact, we can use the same herbicide that we use on our soybeans. So there's no worry about any issues there comes now and I'll get him filled up back to work We had plans this year to expand our acreage, um, but unfortunately that fell through both due to financing and um, market prices. So we really didn't feel it was beneficial for us to grow more corn, soybeans, or canola right now due to the market prices. It just wasn't worth it for us. So we're, gonna, we're sticking with our same 1,200 acres. Instead of the soybeans, we're gonna be doing about 400 acres of canola this year. And I'm really excited to see these fields. Canola is a beautiful plant. It's a flowering plant. This beautiful yellow flower that it um, has. And I'll definitely look forward to showing you some of that stuff. And then, of course, our 800 acres of corn that we always do. Uh, corn is our lifeblood here on, uh, on in Nebraska. So we're definitely going to be keeping doing the corn. So we are been planting all day, and unfortunately, we are only about a quarter of the way done <laughs> with canola planting. So I will not torture you any further with uh, footage of us planting. Go ahead and turn around here. Make sure there's no light poles. Uh, we had an incident a couple years back where we took out, uh, and by we I mean me, I took out a uh, one of the power poles, and let's just say the folks down the road weren't too happy with me, because it took uh, about a day and a half for them to get a new pole and get all that fixed. So that was an expensive mistake, because we had to pay for it. And 
those things happen. Like I said, we're about 100 acres into 400. We'll be planting for the next couple days to get all of our canola in as long as the weather holds out. Weather looks great. We should have rain a day after we finish planting, which will be um, perfect for us. So we're really, really excited for this year. And I'm excited to kick off planting 2020. Tune in next time. We'll be looking at corn and getting that into the ground. It would be really nice to get the other tractor and the other planter to work because as it sits, this is the only equipment we have on the farm that can plant canola. So it's just been the one tractor and one planter running all day today. And it'll be really nice when we get switch over to corn and we can knock out twice as many acres. All right, everybody. Until next time, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you on the farm.